Hey there. So today I wanted to go over a question that came from our social media posts. And this one is the Tuesday Thoughts post. We ask people, tell us in the comments or direct message us what exactly they're struggling with. You know, when it comes to web development, JavaScript, we usually look at the messages and then pick the best one. And then what we'll do is send a video reply just like this. So our question comes from Michael Logan Foy, who talked about callback functions, high order functions. And this is something that comes up quite often at interviews. So I'm actually going to point to our blog post, JavaScript Higher Order Functions Explained, which you can get to from javascriptla.net slash blog, and then just look for the post. I'll put a link to this particular post in the video's uh, description below. And I'm going to reference this, but if you want more detail, you can certainly read the entire blog post. There's a lot of information, and it really goes step by step by step. But for a video format, I feel like maybe it might make sense to just kind of go through it a little bit more quickly, just give you sort of a high level overview. So all that said, I want to preface this video with, you may want to know your JavaScript first, right? If you've never done any kind of JavaScript before, and you're still a newbie, then make sure you can get through the following, at least be able to write your own function and check it out in a console log. Okay, so with all that said, Let's talk about higher order functions. So to get into higher order functions, we first need to know about functions inside functions. So I'm going to take this particular code block here, and then I'm going to go over to a new tab on my Chrome browser and then just right click and hit inspect. And then that's going to bring me up a console. So rather than saving code in a code editor and then running my code somewhere, I'm just going to shortcut and just work with the console in my Chrome browser. This is a neat little shortcut that I usually do a lot of the times when I don't want to like work within a coding editor. So I'm going to bump up the font a little bit here and then I'm going to paste in our code and we'll review it each time before I hit enter and then that way we can take a look at what the result is. So our code sample here says sum two numbers and then it returns x plus y. So you can see that x is 10 and then y is 20 and when we sum two numbers, the return value will be 30, right? 10 plus 20 is 30. And we can hit enter just to see our result and we get back 30. This undefined just comes from console logging. Uh, console log doesn't return anything. Okay, so we're good with that particular example. Now, let's make it a little bit more challenging for ourselves. Let's take that same example. I'm going to refresh the console by just hitting Command R on my keyboard so we have a clean working space. And then I'm going to paste in the code, and before I press Enter, we'll review it again. So here, same function, sum two numbers, but this time I've added a twist, and that's the function. So instead of returning x plus y, I'm going to return a nested function. And so what that's going to do is we're going to still call the function just like we did before. We're going to have the 10 and the 20. But the result of this is actually going to be a function expression. So you can think of this as almost like a anonymous function here, right? A function with no name. And that's going to get saved to result. And so when we press enter, we're going to get back an anonymous function. So you might be thinking at this point, well, how do we get the x plus y, what do we need to do? So we need to revise our code slightly so that we can get the result. And so I'll refresh this particular console and paste in the new revise code. And you can see the revise here is that my result gets that function and becomes its own function. This is called a function expression. And when I hit enter, after calling the function here, I get back my value 30. So one more time, I return a function here. Result is now a function expression. And so in order to get my result x plus y, I have to treat result now like a function as opposed to a variable. And by calling it, I can get the value 30. Hope that's clear. That's the most important part of this video. If you get that, you're in good shape. All right, so let's move on and basically make it a little bit more difficult for ourselves. Because why not, right? 
Okay, so I want to talk quickly about the idea of declarative versus imperative programming because that's a really important paradigm for understanding this particular video segment. So sometimes you want to do things declaratively, other times you want to do things imperatively. So what does that mean? Declarative means telling somebody or telling something to do something and not really worrying about the details. So when you ask somebody to work for you and do some project, you're trusting that that person will do their job and you don't have to micromanage them. However, in imperative, think Darth Vader, Imperial, right? You're basically micromanaging. You're watching every single part of you know the process and just really, really drilling and making sure everything goes. It's very manual. It's very tedious. You're making sure every single step is being executed properly. And that's imperative coding, right? So if you think about it, if we use this code sample, which I'm going to point to next, and I'm just going to go back and hit refresh again in the console and paste in this code, you'll see that this is an imperative way of writing code. I'm saying here I've got a total, it's equal to zero, and I want to loop through each index or each value in my loop and then add that to my total very very manual so it's just you know you can almost think of it as like hard-coded code right because after that after I press enter this total is 45 and now we already have a variable called total we already had a for loop and an I and all that so what happens if I wanna you know do this again do I create another variable called total total 2 and then you know how long should the loop go on this time would it be a hundred one thousand you'd say that I'd have to do that for every single case, right? This is not reusable code. So you can think of it as kind of like manual or imperative code, right? I want something a little bit easier for myself that I can use and you know not have to worry about the details, right? Something more declarative. So let's do something to this code. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this particular code block and hit refresh. And then I'm just gonna paste in the code and we'll go through it. So here I'm saying, all right, the most boring part of this code, right, or the most you know tedious part of the code is this for loop. Because of the for loop, I can never really um, change the range. And that's something that is kind of a problem to me. So here I'm going to bury the for loop inside a new function called for range, and then make it so that anybody can pass in any kind of range and then do something. So for example, here, if I pass in the value 10, 10 will become max range. And then if I want to change it to use in a different for range function, I can make that 100. And then that particular for range will run 100 times or 1,000 times. And then this do something you can think of as a function that we haven't defined yet, right? This could be an expression. For now, it's just a basic variable. But if we pass it an anonymous function, then it can do something here inside the loop. So what I'm creating here is this higher order function that allows us to create any kind of range and use reusable code as opposed to just hard coding it out. So this isn't going to do anything by itself. I still have to call the actual function for me to use it properly for me to see anything. So let's take our next segment from this particular blog post. And this is, again, the function definition. And then I'm going to press shift and enter so I don't accidentally hit enter and run the code. And then I'm just going to add in our function call. So this is really key, especially for newbies who don't really understand JavaScript, you know, especially when they start seeing this, they get confused by it. Well, okay, let's go through it a little bit slower then. So function definition, you can supply a max range. Here I'm actually making the function call, as you can see with the two parameters here like this. And I am I don't have a function keyword in front, so that indicates that this is just the function name, which exists already. And because I have this particular function name, I can call it. And so when I supply a value here, 100, that maps to this max range. And then this function that I wrote here is an anonymous function and that will get saved to do something. And then do something will call this. It's exactly like that variable function we saw at the beginning. Do something gets the value of this function. 
and we call this a callback function. That is your callback function. All right, so when we press enter, we can expect that this for range function will run 100 times and then console log hello world 100 times as well. So let's press enter. And because Chrome is smart, it groups all of those calls into a single line here and just tells you that it ran 100 times. We can reuse this function. And this time we're gonna just paste in, we're gonna add in the number 10 here and we can change whatever the function is over here. So we can say goodbye. So you'll notice that this higher order function ran just fine. It ran again for 10 times as opposed to 100 times reusable code. And this time it printed out console log goodbye world. So it's a very custom function. Hope that makes sense, it's very clear. If you understand this much, you're in good shape. So next I'm gonna refresh my console and paste in this code here. So rather than for range, we have a for each function. And this particular function is going to take an array this time. And we're going to take a callback. So two parameters again. So the idea is we have the array, it has values all the way up to 10. And then the callback we learned already is just a function that we're gonna use down here in this for each function call. And so my array maps to this particular array. And then the function callback is just going to map to here, this callback. So if this helps you understand better, you can definitely do this. You can say I maps to I, and that's totally fine. But if you know your basic JavaScript, basically when you create a function internally, it just creates an item and sets that to whatever you pass it in as the argument. So that's why item is equal to I. All right. So you'll notice that this code already went ahead and ran. And so what it does is it takes every single uh, item in my array or index in my array and then add it to the result. Now you'll notice that this code is sort of wrong because it is not adding the actual value of the array, but it is adding the I value at the time. So it's saying zero plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five, all the way up to the array length, which would be 10 values, but the last value would be index nine. So let's copy this particular code block and then paste it in here. And then let's modify this slightly. And then we'll just say it's array of i. And so what we're saying is we don't want the actual value of i, we want the value at the index of i, so whatever's inside the array. So index of zero will map to one, index of one will map to two, index of two will map to three, and so on all the way up to 10. And that way when we press enter, we get back the true result, which is 55. All right, so one more time to review here. For each is a higher order function that we defined. And we defined it by creating a function definition here and we buried a for loop inside. And we take a callback that we put as a parameter here to later define as this particular function. And we call it back on the index and the value at the index of the array. So a little bit hard to read, but once you practice enough, you'll get it. And then what you really wanna pay attention to when you read any kind of function definition with a callback in it is the function call. That's my own strategy. What I like to do is just go first here and say, okay, for each what? My array, and then what am I gonna do? Here's my callback. Oh, add that to the result. Add each item to the result. And then if I'm still confused, I can go to the definition and see how it was actually defined. I really recommend that as opposed to trying to uh, do it the opposite way where you read the definition and then try to make the function call that, you know, somehow for some reason makes it a little bit more difficult. Okay, hope you're good to go with this particular example. Let's go ahead and finish it out by saying, okay, I want to, you know, go back to this idea of declarative versus imperative, right? That's the whole point, higher order functions. Higher order functions serve a purpose and that's to help you write less code and not have to write it out every single time. Every single time if you had to write out for loop and create all these variables, that would be a pain. And here we've got this for each and it basically sums every result 
And that's okay, but what if I want multiplication? What if I want division? What if I want subtraction? I would still need to go in here and modify this particular segment and then you know that would cause me to have four different for each functions so i can bury the for each inside another function called calculate and so this is going to be the most difficult code in the video but we're going to explore it and rather than write four different for each functions and call each one with multiplication subtraction division and addition we're just going to make a calculate function that buries all of that code. And so all we have to do is just say calculate and pass an array and define what function we want to do. So either plus uh, for addition or uh, minus for subtraction or multiplication or division. This is the ultimate form of a higher order function, right? Where you don't really need to think about the internal details anymore. They're already been battle tested. You just have like a more simple function that works in a declarative way that gets you your result. And that's really the point. So I'm going to hit refresh one more time, and then I'm going to paste in this code here and let's go through it. All right, so I have a simple array, one, two, three, and four. Those are my four values. And then I've got a function called calculate. And then as you would expect, like I said, read from here first before you get into the definition. You can pass in an array and then a operator as a string. So you can choose plus, minus, multiplication or division. So what is exactly going on? I have a internal total variable now, and I'm pointing that to the first value in my array, which is array zero here. And I'm saying, I give me the value one, rather than hard coding it to being zero or something like that. Maybe they don't want zero, it's the calculator. You know, They wanna get the first item in the array. Then we have this object, which I'll come back to in a second. But here's our familiar for each function, which we've also buried into our calculate function. We already know that. And we're saying here, just call back on the array. We already explored this particular example. And then here we're calling for each. Remember, this is the function definition. This is the function call. And now we're actually calling another function, but this is a function inside a special object called do calculation. So this is the most advanced part of this particular video here, and I'm just going to explain it because it might be outside of the scope of what we're exploring today. But whenever we pass in an operator, we can map it to a special JavaScript object that looks at whatever we pass here. So do calculation. And if we pass in the plus sign here, it will map that to whatever the function is as the value. You can think of this as a key and value. And that's a common paradigm with objects, key value pairs. So if I pass in the plus operator, it'll return me back the value of a function, which we know we can already do. We can return a function. And in this particular function here, I'm saying total plus equals item. That will happen anytime I request to do a plus sign, I will do basic addition. If I want to do multiplication, I can just choose this sign and it will return multiplication or times equal an item to the total. And then it'll just run that for every single item in the array. And then at the end, we can just console log our global total variable. And that we can see here, rather than trying to console log it outside, I felt why not just bury that as well in this higher order function. So as you can see, this entire calculate function takes care of a lot of things for me. I don't have to worry so much about the internal details anymore. I can just trust that it'll do its job. And then I can go about my day, maybe after I wrote this particular you know, library, Calculate, I can send it off to somebody else. They can battle test to try it out. And if they like it too, they don't have to write all this Calculate code anymore by hand. They can just use what I gave them and they're good to go. They can start building more advanced, difficult, websites and they don't have to worry about the internal details of building this particular calculate function. So let's go ahead and press enter just to see our code run and I'll go ahead and do that here and you can see that I get back 10 and then negative 8, 24 and then 0.4 and this is basically just returning the last value here but again if you want to just double check for yourself we can just do that real quick 1 plus 2, 3, 3 plus 3, 6, 6 plus 4, 10 so that's good. And then over here, negative eight, you can just do 
1 minus 2 is uh, minus 1, minus 1, minus 3 is basically minus 4, minus 4, minus 4 is minus 8. So that looks pretty good here. Then one more time, 1 times 2, 2, 2 times 3, 6, 6 times 4, 24. So it looks like this is pretty good. It looks like we got our functions working just fine. Uh, like I said, the entire code segment and everything is on this particular blog. So if you want to go through this again a little bit more slowly and just read through all the examples, you can. I've done a lot more in-depth coverage of every single code sample here. But yeah, that's the gist. If you got this video and you think that this was good, then feel free to just basically like this video. And again, if you have comments, you can leave a comment at the bottom of this video. I'll read it. And then, yeah, if you're new, also subscribe to this particular channel. We'd love to have your support. All right, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in another video.